Hello everyone. In this video we are going to talk everything about what is pelvic floor, what is pelvic diaphragm, what is perineum, what is perineal membrane, all the concepts in single video. I know this, these things like what is pelvic floor, how it is related to the pelvis and uh, different layer and different membranes superficial perineal pouch deep peri uh, deep perineal pouch all these things are very confusing even for uh, even for senior students so i will try to make understand with different modes of learnings first of all let's start with this pelvic floor now what is pelvic floor what do you think about pelvic floor pelvic floor it's just like a floor of our house for example if you see that this is our house and here is a floor okay this one is a floor now in the floor we have different layers just not single layer so if we see this floor they are in different layers in that so I am making three layers in this floor okay the first layer of pelvic floor is pelvic diaphragm okay the second layer of the pelvic floor is pelvic membrane pelvic diaphragm pelvic membrane and third one will be coming superficial fascia so this total thing makes a pelvic floor rather than just when you see a pelvic diaphragm no it's not pelvic diaphragm only pelvic diaphragm is a part of pelvic floor okay now where is that superficial and deep perineal pouches are situated between this pelvic diaphragm and perineal membrane deep perineal pouch is situated Between this perineal membrane and superficial fascia, the superficial perineal pouch is situated. Okay, so now you remember there are three layers in pelvic floor pelvic diaphragm, perineal membrane, and superficial fascia. The two pouches that is, deep perineal pouch and superficial perineal pouch. Among this, the deep perineal pouch situated between pelvic diaphragm and perineal membrane and the superficial perineal pouch situated in between perineal membrane and superficial fascia. So now this thing is clear now. Now we need to just learn all these three things. That is pelvic diaphragm, what is pelvic perineal membrane, what is superficial fascia and what, uh, and what is included into to, uh, to do the perineal pouches okay now let's start with pelvic diaphragm before understanding anything in the pelvis you need to really have a anatomy or 3d anatomy of hip bones inside your mind so for that thing i will take you for an external source here this is my friend the pelvis and the muscles of perineal floor or perineal diaphragm is here okay I have a different another model simplified model of this pelvis here this is a very simplified model of hip bones or a pelvis you can see here here this thing is a this thing is a ilium okay this both things are ilium what is this sacrum okay what is this small part this small part is here this is sacrum here is a sacrum and here is a coccyx here is a sacrum and this triangular bone big bone is a 
ilium okay now we remember this thing let's go ahead this thing uh, here the triangular another small triangular things here are joint of ischium and pubis so here is ischium here is a pubis here is ischium here is pubis between them there is a foramen okay so ischium here pubis here this is ischio pubic rami okay so now you understand the concept of the pelvis now let's go with the original real pelvis here here is the real pelvis you are seeing here okay two hip bones and the sacrum this is a sacrum this is coccyx these these two are hip bones this is ischium sorry sorry this is ilium both of side the ilium is here this thing you are seeing here is a pubis and behind this is a ischium okay again i'm i will try to see uh, i want you to see this thing here with different views what is this pubis sorry ilium this is ischium and this thing here is a pubis okay i know i am taking time but you have to understand the real 3d anatomy of pelvis to understand the diaphragm and everything so now let's go with um, pelvic floor muscles so here is a pelvic floor muscles you can see now now you will better identify how they are you know, situated this is again ilium this is pubis and below that is a ischium here ischium this is pubis and this is ilium so you have now idea of what is ilium ischium and pubis okay and how they are situated you know the planes how they are situated now let's see how the pelvic diaphragm is situated now you need to remember very 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 easy thing that in the pelvic diaphragm there are four muscles in pelvic diaphragm there are four muscles here in pelvic diaphragm you have four different muscles now which are these muscles if my video uh, sounds you slower then you can uh, increase this uh, play, uh, playback speed up to 1.5 okay if you if you think if you will understand this thing uh, slowly then you will get everything so please try to have a concentration here this is the four muscles are there in pelvic diaphragm which are those four muscles the first comes is ischiococcygeus the second one comes is pubococcygeus third one is puborectalis and fourth one is iliococcygeus remember this four name ischiococcygeus pubococcygeus puborectalis iliococcygeus now the number uh, now the name of the muscles are uh, uh, are made from their origin and insertions so if i talk about ischiococcygeus then i should think that the this muscle ischiococcygeus should be between ischium and coccygeus if i talk about pubococcygeus then i should think that the muscle is between pubis and coccygeus if i think about puborectalis pubis and rectum 
If I talk about iliococcygeus, I should remember that the muscle is between ilium and coccygeus. Okay, so the simple thing is that. Now, what is levator ani? These three muscles, my friends, combinedly called levator ani. That's it. All your concept of levator ani, just forget that. Remember this thing. These three muscles are combinedly called levator ani. And levator ani is not only muscle in pelvic diaphragm. Which muscle is extra? Ischiococcygeus. So, ischiococcygeus plus levator ani, that means pelvic diaphragm. So, ischiococcygeus is not a part of levator ani. So, this confusion should be clear at this point only. Okay, ischiococcygeus is a different muscle, levator ani is a different muscle. In the levator ani, we have three muscles. Pubococcygeus, puborectalis, iliococcygeus. That is clear. Now let's go ahead. Okay, now where are these three muscles are situated? I'm telling you. For that thing, you need to go uh, uh, to the 3D structures here. Now, here. Can you see the ischiococcygeus muscle? Where is the ischiococcygeus muscle? Can you identify? This is the coccyx. Okay, and now you know that this is the coccyx, and now you know that this is the ischium, this is the pubic, and this is the ilium. So these muscles, my friend, these muscles. Let me make it clear. This muscle is ischiococcygeus. This muscle is ischiococcygeus here. This muscle is both side ischiococcygeus. From ischium to coccyx. You got my friends? Again. Now the remaining is levator ani. So how they are situated? Let me make you clear. Let we go deep inside this pelvis. The levator ani consists of three muscles. Pubococcygeus, puborectalis and iliococcygeus. The first come is pubococcygeus. What is pubococcygeus? Here is the pubis from the pubis to coccyx. So this muscle is pubococcygeus. This muscle is pubococcygeus. You got my friends now let uh, let's see the another muscle is puborectalis so this muscle here making the arch around the rectum this is rectum this is rectum so this muscle makes the arch around rectum so it is called puborectalis okay so third muscle has been gone now the, the remaining is iliococcygeus so, iliococcygeus muscle is very difficult to understand. This muscle you are seeing here, my friends, is a iliococcygeus. This muscle. Now, the name suggests iliococcygeus. So, you think that, that the muscle should be between ilium and coccyx. So, as you can see here, this concept you will never understand by just reading your book so just have a concentration here here what is this what is this this is obturator foramen and one muscle is just not has been seen here that is obturator internus okay here is the muscle obturator internus here here is the muscle, but it is not seen in this model. So, this is obturator internus. And now, obturator internus is just like that here only. This is only the obturator internus is there. The remaining this muscle is a, the remaining this thing is a obturator internus fascia. 
okay this muscle is obturator internus here this muscle is obturator internus and this is obturator fascia again i want to tell you just pay attention here what is obturator internus obturator internus this muscle is at a start from here is only this big only is a small muscle and it has a fascia called obturators internus fascia okay so obturator internus muscle takes origin from ilium what is here ilium okay and our muscle that is iliococcygeus this muscle is taking origin from the fascia of the fascia of obturator internus and the line which is uh, on the fascia is called tendinous arch okay again i am telling you again first of all just imagine here is the muscle called obturator internus here taking origin from ilium okay that obturator internus muscle has a fascia here below that going just in this direction now up, upon this fascia there is a thickening that is called tendinous arch okay so our muscle that is ilio coccygeus is taking origin from this tendinous arch of obturator's internus muscle obturator's internal muscle and attaches to the attaches to the coccyx so now you understand iliococcygeus is what iliococcygeus just does not directly contact between ilium and coccyx iliococcygeus muscle attaches to the tendinous arch of obturator's internus muscle and that obturator internus muscle is in turn originate from ilium that's why this muscle is called iliococcygeus so this was i think a very interesting and a very important concept for you so now you understand that you have four different muscle in pelvic diaphragm isiococcygeus pubococcygeus puborectalis and iliococcygeus okay okay now we have a central tendon of perineum what is what we what we mean by that when we see this when we see this uh, uh, this pelvic floor it is symmetrical so both side of muscle are there okay so both side of muscle are there. here is the tendinous arch here is the one side of and here is the second side of so bilaterally they muscle attach with uh, 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 into a central tendon that is called central tendon where both of side of this muscle get attached okay that is very simple no need to uh, do headache in that thing now let's uh, go further yeah now what is perineal membrane as we have talked about as we have talked about the pelvic floor is made by pelvic diaphragm and below that there is a pelvic perineal membrane and below that there is a superficial fascia so the perineal membrane is a facial facial membrane a real facial membrane below the pelvic diaphragm that is pelvic muscles below the muscles we have a different separate perineal membrane you want to see that to see here this is a pelvic diaphragm and here you see here is a perineal membrane here triangular thing 
is a perineal membrane. Yes, is a perineal membrane, and it is separated from from the pelvic muscles. Oh, sorry, uh, from the pelvic diaphragm. Okay, so here. Here you are seeing is what pelvic diaphragm and here you are seeing the muscles inside inside uh, around the pel uh, a perineal membrane so perineal membrane is not seen here but is situated here so now you understand what is perineal membrane what it now let's go ahead perineal membrane is a triangular Perineal membrane is a triangular shaped facial membrane between the pubic rami, two pubic rami and below the pelvic diaphragm. Between these two pubic rami we have a perineal membrane. The space between pelvic diaphragm and perineal membrane is called deep perineal pouch. Okay, now this is a figure of a, a perineal membrane and a deep perineal pouch we have just removed perineal membrane and we are what we are seeing here we are seeing just the muscles of deep perineal pouch in deep perineal pouch we have only one muscle that is deep transverse muscle another uh, five muscle fibers are also there some people just nomenclature culture, culture them otherwise a very single muscle deep transverse muscle is there here is a deep transverse perineal muscle This is vaginal opening, this is a urovaginal opening, this is anal opening. Okay. Now what is deep perineal pouch? Deep perineal pouch contains deep transverse perineal muscle. It is between perineal membrane uh, and pelvic diaphragm. Okay. Now what is superficial perineal pouch? The superficial perineal pouch is between perineal membrane and membranous layer of superficial fascia. Okay. And it contains what? Superficial transverse perineal deep transverse perineal was a part of deep perineal pouch so the superficial transverse perineal is a part of superficial pouch another muscles are bulbospongineus ischiocavernous bartholin glands these are the uh, another contains of deep perineal pouch posteriorly both of these spaces are closed now you also have heard that the urogenital diaphragm what is that pelvic fascia and perineal membrane both combinedly called urogenital diaphragm i am talking about pelvic fascia i am not talking about superficial fascia here okay superficial fascia i am not talking about superficial fascia i am talking about perineal fascia what is perineal fascia is just a muscle fascia below the pelvic diaphragm pelvic diaphragm is a made of levator ani and ischiococcygeus muscle and to cover those muscles, we have a simple, simple, very simple uh, fascia. The, this fascia is present everywhere, you know. And this, in between these two fascia, in the, in the perineal membrane, we have a deep perineal space. Okay, so what is urogenital diaphragm? The concept of urogenital diaphragm is, is a, made of two layers. The one layer is called pelvic fascia and the second layer is itself a perineal membrane. So whenever you see that what is urogenital diaphragm, you just imagine that there is a perineal membrane and there is a fascia which covers the pelvic diaphragm. Okay, so that makes a urogenital diaphragm. Now there is a concept of per perineal body, but I will come later here. First understand the concept here uh, of, uh, understand the concept here of a pelvic uh, diaphragm. Now this is a very simple figure I have made very with very uh, uh, it had taken much time. This is sacrum. This is the coccyx. You remember this thing? Now this is the ischium. Here is the ilium. Here is the pubis. This is anal opening. This is vaginal opening. Now this uh, this is just the bony parts. Now I have added a pelvic diaphragm muscles here. So now it will be very very easy for you to understand. What is pelvic diaphragm? This is what? This is what? Ischium. So between the ischium and coccyx, this is ischiococcygeus muscle. Now you understand this thing? Again, here, the pubis is there. 
so between pubis and coccyx this is pubococcygeous muscle you here see pubococcygeous muscle is here this muscle is a pubococcygeous muscle both side this is a puborectalis again okay this is a puborectalis muscle and what is this this uh, is a ilium okay and what which is this muscle which is attached to the ilium is obturator internus and obturator internus the fascia we have a tendinous arch of on ilium a tendinous arch is fascia of obturator internus and a fascia of obturator internus and from that thing this muscle gets origin which is this muscle ilio coccygeus so now we understand this uh, uh, concept of pelvic diaphragm now you please understand the concept of this perineal pouches this is the isio pubic ramus you see this is the isio pubic ramus above that you see a pelvic diaphragm this is a pelvic diaphragm this is a perineal membrane the green color is a perineal membrane between this we have a deep perineal pouch here you see a superficial fascia you know uh, and in between that we have a superficial perineal pouch so in the deep perineal pouch we have muscle deep transverse perineal and superficial perineal pouch we have different sets of muscle now what are those muscle the, here is the muscles i am showing you these muscles are of superficial perineal pouch the deep transverse perineal muscle here now you understand this is a urogenital opening in which we have a urethra and vaginal opening it is an anal opening here and between these two openings urogenital openings and anal opening there is a perineal body what is perineal body it is a just a fibrous body a very strong fibrous body where many muscles gets origin you see here this is ischio cavernous muscle here ischio cavernous muscle is here this one bulbo spongineus muscle is around the urogenital opening bulbo spongineus muscle is around the urogenital opening here is a bulbo spongineus muscle now this muscle is a superficial transverse perineal muscle here we have shown the deep transverse perineal muscle but it is below this membrane now you should know this membrane which is below this uh, uh, which is which is this membrane below which the deep transverse perineal muscle is there it is pub it is perineal membrane but we have not shown the perineal membrane here okay now this muscle you have seen is a pubococcygeous muscle here this is iliococcygeous muscle here so here is a perineal body so now what is perineal body what is perineal body perineal body is a fibromuscular body where all the above muscles are jointly attached which above muscles deep transverse perineal superficial transverse perineal bulbo spongineus levator ani urinary sphincter muscles anal sphincter muscles these muscles are which muscle is not attached to the perineal body ischio cavernous now i will take you 3d model where you can really understand what is what i'm trying to tell you now you see here are the muscles here okay and let me select my pen okay here is a opening of vagina and urethra this is urethral opening this is vaginal opening what, which is this muscle which is this muscle bubo uh, uh bubo sorry which is this muscle bulbo coccygeus bulbo coccygeus muscle is here what is this ischio cavernous muscle these are ischio cavernous muscle this muscle is superficial transverse perineal here the muscle are shown is deep transverse perineal but what we have not shown in this uh, images in this images what we have not shown in this images perineal membrane so now you remember again repeat repeat i am telling the repeat thing this is urethra this is vagina both of these muscles are bulbo spongineus muscle 
here is the ischio cavernous muscle this is a superficial transverse perineal muscle this is a deep transverse perineal muscle this thing is a perineal body okay here here are the muscles of pelvic diaphragm again you are seeing here these muscles are they are also attached to the perineal body so perineal body is a very very important structure uh, to remain uh, to maintain the pelvic diaphragm now all these things I have made here what are the function of pelvic diaphragm the function of pelvic diaphragm is just to hold the abdominal structures like abdominal viscera uh, like colon uh, the uh, intestines the pelvis muscles like pelvis things like uterus prostate and this thing muscle these muscles are holded by this pelvic diaphragm so I think if you read this video one to two times you will definitely get the concept of uh, what is pelvic diaphragm pelvic mem perineal membrane and superficial fascia the pouches and once you just understand this concept it will be lifelong for you if you don't understand this concept then this will strike your mind every time when you read that what is pelvic floor and what I think so, when I what should I think when I think about pelvic floor whether it is only pelvic diaphragm no where is the deep perineal pouch where is the superficial pouch, perineal pouch all these things you need to really understand to, to understand this just watch this video I know it's a boring video but, but read and watch two to three times this video and you will just take notes and make your own notes so you will understand further and just remember it forever thank you friends